welcome to Waypoint Survival. Today, we're going to talk about how to pack like a hobo. Stay tuned. The hobo culture is a very interesting culture. Uh, many men and even women traveled the rails. And we kind of look at the classic age of the hobo being sometime in the 1920s through the 1940s. And that's kind of the era that I've studied and I really enjoy reading the stories and hearing the tales of the people who lived in that era and who traveled the rails going from place to place. Of course, hobos were men and women who were skilled laborers. Uh, they were not bums and they were not drunks. Uh, a hobo is a laborer who travels from place to place and many things around the United States were built by hobos. Uh, from uh, things along the railroads uh, to bridges and dams and all sorts of projects uh, the hobos in the hobo culture helped build them. At one point there's estimated to be perhaps as many as two million hobos in the United States. So that's quite a large number. Of course a hobo travels and works. A tramp merely goes from place to place and only works if he has to. A bum is someone who doesn't travel and they just like to drink and basically hang around town and look for more alcohol. But the hobos had a hobo code as I talked about in one of my recent videos and they were generally pretty honorable people who often had families back home and they would work hard and send their money back to support them because there wasn't any work in their hometown, especially during the depression era. Often in my videos I use a bindle and a bindle stick sort of a caricature of the hobo culture. Now they did use those but also packs were very common and so I have one today that I'm going to show you the contents of. It's very light, doesn't weigh a lot, about 15 and a half pounds but it carries pretty much all the essentials that you would need if you're going to hit the open road you're going to take a train and go somewhere. Let's get into that right now. What we have here is a classic canvas pack from the 1930s. It is a Boy Scout pack and we have a wool blanket as you can see wrapped around it uh, in a horseshoe fashion and that's just tied together so this would be very typical of the type of packs that were available to someone who was poor and on the road the pack is simply tied together with a shoestring held together with a lark's head knot through the top grommet and then we have our horseshoe shape of our wool blanket and it's tied on the sides. Again, very easy to take off. Everything has to be modular. And just like that, we have the wool blanket. And this is something, of course, be very useful when you're sleeping inside of a boxcar or alongside of the road. Now, some hobos might also carry a tarp. Uh, they would often sleep around towns, but then there were places when they would have to camp out too. So it just really depends. Of course, you could always sleep up under the train if you uh, were sure you weren't going to get caught. At the very top of our pack we have a very old canteen and uh, this dates back into the 1930s, 1940s. It's got a Bakelite top on it and this would be something you would carry because you wouldn't always be able to find clean water and you might have to actually walk some distance but it would be a way to stay hydrated while you're riding the many miles along the rails. In the very back of the pack we have a large skillet. Of course this is the cool handle skillet and this is simply carried in a canvas bag, wax canvas bag and this is going to help protect the rest of the gear from all the soot that you might get on your pan when you're cooking. We also have an aluminum plate and this would be good for if a person went up to a house and you were asking for a meal often they would give you the food but Sometimes if they would bring it out to you and let you sit on the back porch and put it on your knees, that's called a knee shaker meal. And uh, of course also around the hobo fire, uh, you would want to have your own plate for that mulligan stew. We also have our neck pouch. It's an old leather tobacco pouch and I have done a video on this. So most of you that have watched my videos, you have uh, an understanding of what's inside of this pouch. And this carries a fishing kit and various things that a man might need along the road to make do, make repairs to his gear and things like that. We also carry a tin cup, actually this is aluminum, with an extra bandana stuffed inside. That's to help uh, keep it from rattling around. And also this forms our bindle when we want to make that with our stick. Hygiene was pretty important uh, because a person wanted to look their best when you went into town and so we have a toothbrush, a small tin with some soap, and finally we have a very small 
miniature little case which contains a compact safety razor and some extra razor blades. It was very important that a hobo stayed presentable and most of them stayed clean shaven most of the time because they uh, they wanted to make sure that they looked presentable for work. Next we have our pot and this is just an old leather belt. It's got some large loops cut in it here to go around this plastic handle. It's fairly tight. It's supposed to hold everything on there so it can be a little difficult to get off. There we go. Of course, just take this off and then inside we have a couple of paper bags and in this one we have some red beans and in the other bag some rice. So this is something you could put on the fire and begin to boil if you had a lot of time just waiting on trains so you would just keep your fire going and keep your pot boiling. Hobos would also use whatever they could scavenge or beg sometimes uh, or if they could do some work for someone get some potatoes perhaps a little bit of, of meat but whatever they could get uh, they would put in here and of course just like in today beans and rice pretty cheap and pretty easily available for people who are on the road. Of course we've got to have a spoon goes along with the rest of our meal and then inside this waxed bag we have all of our tools and I'll lay those out and I'll explain them to you. Of great importance of course would be the sheath knife. Many of you are familiar with this. This is an old western and it is a Boy Scout knife. But you would want a good solid fixed blade for being out on the road. Many things you could do from firewood task to even defending yourself. Along with that, wrapped in a piece of soft leather, is our sharpening stone. Very important to keep the blade sharp. A pair of metal snips. These are good for all sorts of projects and repairs, making can stoves and things along the side of the road. A pair of pliers and this pair of pliers has been fastened and shaped so that the one side also doubles as a flathead screwdriver but this is very important you can use this to get the pot off of the fire when it's boiling so you don't burn your hands of course you can always use the handkerchief for that as well but a good solid pair of pliers really good for repairs around the house you would go to a home and maybe the lady of the house would need a door repaired or or something fixed some hinges on a gate and of course you would need pliers things like that to do those sorts of jobs the next item is a flathead screwdriver. Now, although Phillips screws were invented in the mid-1930s, they were still not commonly and widespread in use for some time, and most of your home repairs would be done with a flathead screwdriver, plus you could use this as a chisel, you could also use it as a wedge uh, to help keep a uh, boxcar door from rolling shut on you and things like that. So, flathead screwdriver, very, very important. A small file and as I've said before this is important of course big nicks in your knife blade or if you needed to sharpen something like a nail for making those hobo nickels. Hobo also needed his can opener. Uh, tinned food uh, was first invented in the early 1800s and so by the time of the depression canned food or tinned food was very very common so that was something that would be a standby. We also of course have our bottle opener this side, church key on that side and a lot of things had to have this church key for an opener. Uh, not only cans of oil, but a lot of cans of juice and various other things it took this. And so someone that was out on the road would definitely want one of this for their beverages. Of course, a couple of 16 penny nails for hanging up things and one flattened and sharpened out so that you could use it as a chisel. Here we have a small tin that has coffee beans in it. Another reason you could use a screwdriver is to pry the lid up and inside we have our coffee beans. Oh, that smells good. And that keeps them sealed up and fresh. And that way we can always grind and make our own coffee alongside the road. We also have the Hobo Hussif, which contains the sewing kit. Hussif, of course, from Housewife and this was used for uh, sewing and repairs and I did add a bit of wax to this and a little bit of canvas for repairing the pack when needed. Next we have an old Prince Albert tin 
and I have done a video on this if you want to know what the contents are but this is something that a hobo could slide in his pocket carry around with him when he wasn't at camp and we didn't have all of his gear with him but with this he could fish there's a small candle in there just bits and pieces of things that he might need to repair and to get along throughout his day next must have some cord so we have some waxed brown cord along with a roll of string you can use that for a lot of things around and repairing in our hobo camp as well as our gear on the road. We also have another stub of a candle and this was great for light when you needed it going into dark tunnels and things like that. Of course the old shot shell with a cork for a top this has matches inside and that possibly would be also carried in a pocket depending on what you would need for the day. We also have our harmonica and this is something that uh, a lot of hobos would carry. Have some music along the side of the road. Some of them were quite talented. The last thing we have, two things actually, in the pack are a bottle of salt and a bottle of pepper. This is of course for the beans, and the rice, and anything else we might find we could season our food. So as you can see, a good amount of tools and a person who would travel the road often was um, a jack of all trades, master of none and so they often had the ability to do a lot of repairs and so a basic set of tools would come in real handy when they're trying to make some money or earn a, a meal perhaps. A couple more items still in the pack. Spare pair of socks and an extra clean shirt for using when you go into town to make sure we can be presentable when we go to find work. And that's what the full kit looks like laid out all together. All fits in the pack. Again it's very lightweight Pretty much only what you need to get by on the road and truth is if you had to you get by with a lot less now of course modern hobos carry a lot more than this mostly modern backpacking gear but this is a sample of what you might see in a hobo's pack in the classic era of the hobo Well folks, it's getting dark, and I've got a ways to go before I get to the next hobo jungle. See you next time. This is James Bender for Waypoint Survival. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also make sure and check out the links in the description box below, just under the more button. And while you're down there, you'll also find our waypointsurvival.com link. And this is where you can sign up to take survival and bushcraft classes at our beautiful training facility in Southern Ohio. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. We'd really appreciate it. And when you do subscribe, make sure and press that bell button so that you can stay notified of all of our upcoming videos. And we'll talk to you next time. Pack light, live free, go hobo.